What is up, Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. Now, in case if you're new here, my name's Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. And hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? Now, today I have on the Gallant Dive watch in blue. And the reason that I'm wearing this watch is so not only to give it a bit of wrist time, but to also let you know that if you saw my review, which you can check out up here, and you want to pick one of these up, you can actually use my savings code. Dave saves on Amazon to get 10% off the price. Now the reason for that is because I reached out to Gallant to see if they could send me one of their moon phase watches for a review and they agreed as well as providing the discount for you guys as my viewers. So when the moon phase watch arrives, which should be sometime later this week, I'll do a full review, give you my thoughts and opinions on that as well. Now today's video is part of a new series I'm starting called Watches to Watch, which is where I'll do a full review on a watch that I've picked up that is no longer directly available from a company or site, but can be found on the secondary market or used market. And these are gonna be watches that I've purchased, that I really enjoy, that I would recommend, uh, but you'll just have to keep an eye out for, hence watches to watch. That way you can snag one and hopefully you get a deal that's the same, if not better than what I picked up some of these watches for. And this one we're taking a look at today is the Detomazzo Firenze. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the review. Tomaso, a German-based company inspired by Italian racing, hence the Italian-style names of the watch and the models they released. The brand was formed about 20 years ago, however, recently within the last two years, it has gone through a new partnership and redesign. What used to be heavily inspired by racing with many relatively busy dial designs that are pretty cool, the watches being made by the brand now have more of a minimalist and clean look to them. Not bad in my opinion, just different. I happen to really like the look of their panda dialed Sorpasso chronograph watch, and I'll link their website in the description so you can check out more if you're interested. Now the watch we're taking a look at today is called the Detomaso Firenze, which is a quartz chronograph watch that to me has a Breitling Navitimer kind of vibe. These watches have been released in a variety of colors ranging from blue, white, black, red, yellow to name a few, and in my case here, this beautiful hunter green color. What I like about this watch is that the subdials are not white, but rather this very, very pale green color, almost as if there's just very subtle green tint applied to them. And this is the same color that is applied to the tachymeter section of the case. Above the tachymeter scale, we see GMT hour markers, and that's because this watch also does have a world time bezel. If you're not sure how to use this type of bezel, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications as I'll be doing a tutorial on how to use this feature coming up soon. So stay tuned. The bezel is 90 clicks and it is unidirectional. And I have to say, I just love this champagne color. The bezel has a pearlescent effect and in different lighting, it ranges from brown to tan to champagne and even light gold. Now I do have to point out too that the bezel feel could be better. So it's not all perfect. It does look and feel nice with the polished coin edge. However, it rotates rather easily and there's a bit too much back play. So there would be some room for improvement there in my opinion. I like that the coin edging is deep but not sharp and the bezel extends just slightly beyond the case, hiding the sides of the case when looking at the watch straight on. Let's give you some measurements of the watch next. So the case diameter is 42 millimeters. If we include the crown, it comes out to 44 and a half millimeters. Lug to lug height is 50 and a half millimeters and the case thickness with this flat mineral crystal is 12 millimeters. The watch has a hunter green leather strap that is 20 millimeters wide as we see here at the lugs and features a brushed stainless steel tang buckle with the Death Maso logo applied as well. Sticking with the racing themed inspiration, we see the leather strap is padded on the outside edge and tapers inward where it's lined with contrast stitching. The stitching is also champagne in color, but it may not show up that way on the camera. And turning the watch over, we see this bright red contrast color on the back of the strap that does tie in with the same color red second hand. Moving to the case, we see it's made from stainless steel and has brushing on the sides of the case with Detomaso branding engraved into the case. Now, some may be put off by this being reminiscent of Invicta, but remember, Swiss made luxury brand Blancpain does the same thing on their iconic dive watch. So I guess if you're gonna hate one, you gotta hate them all. Now the brushing on the sides transitions nicely to polished edging on the lug tips 
where it sharply flares out, but then immediately transitions back to brushed on the fronts of the lugs. I mean, it's a detail that's easy to miss, but it can definitely be appreciated when it's discovered nonetheless. Now on the opposite side of the case, we see the coin edge located at three o'clock with the sterile polished face and also these piston style pushers located above and below the crown, also done in high polish. An interesting detail to point out is the case is actually cut away slightly where the crown sits, allowing for your fingernail to easily get under the crown. And on the back side of the case, we see a screw down stainless steel case back with that Tommaso branding and an indication of 100 meter water resistance, which is awesome. Heading back to the dial, we see it's a very busy and yet, in my opinion, cohesive dial design. The three sub dials are located at three, six and nine o'clock with a date window position between four and five o'clock. There's an applied Detomaso logo at 12 o'clock in high polish and applied high polish stick hour markers that reflect the light well. Detomaso branding and model name are also printed at 12 o'clock, filling the space that's located just above and between the sub dials. The hour markers also have five minute indications printed and there are simple stick minute markers printed along the outer edge. The minute and hour hands are simple stick shaped hands done in high polish with a loom applied. However, the loom does not last much at all on this watch. As mentioned before, there's a bright red second hand. It's needle shaped and has the Detomaso logo attached on the back end. When we put the crown into position two, the gear ratio is long, meaning it takes a lot of turns to rotate the hands a full 12 hours. Now that said, turning of the crown feels nice. We see that the day change begins around 10.20 p.m. and turns over just before midnight. Now in position one, the day change is quick and the date wheel cycles almost a bit too fast. You can see that if you go slow, it'll fall into the next date, but if you turn the crown too quickly, you can pass in between the dates, which is a bit clunky. And there's a deep straight ray hot that has brushed effect and we can see that the tachymeter also is recessed just slightly below the crystal, allowing for a third depth effect and for shadows to be cast from the bezel itself. For the sub dials, we have a simple 24 hour indication at three o'clock. When we press the top pusher, running second hands are tracked at six o'clock and running minutes are tracked up to one hour at the nine o'clock sub dial. Pressing the bottom pusher will reset the chronograph function. So while the pushers do work without issue, there's no distinct tactile feel when pushing each piston. They feel rather mushy. I do wish that was not the case. All right, let's go ahead and summarize and talk price guys. Currently on eBay in the US, these can be found in different colors and conditions for anywhere from 75 up to about 140. I think for the price, if you can get a really good deal on one, they can provide some exceptional value. I have not heard of this brand much, but after taking a chance on this one, I think I made a really good choice. And who knows, I may try to get a different colored one in the future, but for now, this green and champagne combination has really grown on me. Here's how the watch wears on my seven inch wrist. Let me know in the comments what you think on this episode of Watches to Watch. It's my hope to bring light to some really cool watches out there that are off the radar, but still somewhat easy to obtain and still get a great deal on. Make sure you subscribe to get a heads up on my next review and I'll look forward to seeing you there. As always, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.